and I we thank you Lord that the praise and worship team will come on in Jesus mighty name And your mercy towards us for your goodness. And your mercy toward us. Can we just stay there for just a second? For your goodness. And your mercy toward us for your your mercy toward us sing all over the building for your goodness and your mercy and your mercy toward us for your for your goodness and your mercy and your mercy toward us for your for by myself hallelujah oh we praise him we praise you lord i'm trying to go on y'all but we praise you lord just sing unto the lord sing unto the lord a new song you don't have to sound like whatever just sing unto the lord it's the posture of your heart that he cares about oh we offer a praise hallelujah
just dare you to say hallelujah. I just dare you to say thank you, Jesus. I just dare you to say you're worthy, God. I just dare you to say you're holy, God. I just dare you to say I will bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. I just dare you, I just dare you to just give God what he deserves. Oh, if we had a thousand tongues, it still wouldn't be enough to give God what he deserves. Oh, come on and just bless him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Enter into his presence. For the Lord is here. Oh, 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 oh. oh come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, Lord, we give this to you. Oh, Lord, accept our offering. Accept our offering, oh God. Oh, oh Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when we are ready for our routine, sometimes God has to interrupt it because the atmosphere has to be right. And there was a heaviness in here and there was a weight in here oh but can you just lift your hands or clap your hands and shout unto god if you feel freedom in this place if you can feel your breakthrough in this place if you could feel his peace in this place if you could feel his joy in this place hallelujah 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 oh just shout out hallelujah you well good morning dominion hallelujah did you come to bless the lord did you come to bless the lord did you come to bless the lord oh hallelujah hallelujah well it seemed like we got some praises in this place do we we got some people that's ready to just say i will bless the lord at all times and his praises shall continually that means they go on and on and on and on and keeps going. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I think that we ready. What y'all think? Sister Taryn, you ready back there? I see that you ready. Sister Tracy, you ready? Bree, you ready? Bree, you ready? <laughs> Amen. Well, since y'all ready to praise the Lord, let's Woo! praise the Lord. Let's bless his name at all times. Come, Come on, on. Put your hands together. Come on, y'all. Come on, magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Come on. Come on. When the sun he has redeemed. Say, clap your hands. Clap your hands, rejoice and sing. You're the Lord of everything. You're the Lord of everything. Come on, say, I will. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord at all times. Say it again. Say I will. I will bless the Lord. Everybody say bless the Lord at. Bless the Lord at all times. Come on, let's say go. For the Lord our God is great. Come on, come on. Perfect God in all your ways. Say God of mercy, Lord. his name go say it again say bless the lord bless the lord oh my soul and all that's within me bless his name keep saying that right there go won't you bless the lord bless the lord 
bless the Lord, oh my soul and all that's within me, bless his name. One more time, say bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul and all that's within me, bless his name. When I'm lost and all alone, got no one to call my own. Troubles chasing me, I will, bless the Lord. I will stand up and give him praise. I will bless the Cause Lord. he is the God of gods, he's always by my side. I will, bless I will rest in his holy presence, the inside the Lord I hide. I will bless the no Lord. problem is too great, for oh my God reigns on high. I will bless the Lord. No problem can run me away from my God's side. He's
great things. Oh, so many things. So many great, great things. I praise his holy name. Because he has done great things. So many things for me. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things for me. So I will. How about we praise our mighty God today? Let alone bless him, just praise his name. If you know he's mighty, say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Oh, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heavens. I think of all you've made, the sun, the moon, and the stars. No praise is high enough to express how great you are. What a mighty God we Say, Lord, you're mine. 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 Say, Lord. Lord, you're mine. You're mighty. Lord, you're mine. Oh, Lord. Lord, you're mine. You're mighty. Lord, you're mine. Say, Lord, you're mine. 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 Is your name in all the earth? You set your glory above the heavens and the earth. And when I think, when I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, there's no praise. No praise. 
Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you're mighty. Say, Lord, you are so mighty. mighty he is mighty he's mighty he's mighty he's mighty he's great in battle he's mighty he's mighty sometimes we have to repeat things to realize that he's mighty it's not a question about it like this is like for real he's mighty like he has all power in his hand. He's in control. He speaks to the storm and it stops. He's mighty. Mountains move because he's mighty. Demons tremble because he's mighty. <laughs> ah, he's mighty. He's mighty. And we, because he's mighty, we can stand amazed at all the things. The saints of old used to say, when I look back over my life, amen, amen. and I'll be like, oh, okay, that sounds good. Until I became of age, and I was like, when I look back over my life, I see that God has been good. He's been mighty. He's been amazing. Has, has there, is there any time that God has left you in awe? I can't be the only one. I'm talking about when you you knew that he was going to work it out, but he superseded anything that you could like ask. He superseded your imagination and you said, God, no you didn't. There's so many times that I'm like, God, you didn't do that for me. You did that for me. He will move heaven and earth just for you and 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 for you. And for you for all of us because he loves because he's so amazing and because of that we can stand in awe of him and I'm talking about not just like oh but I'm talking about oh like I cannot believe like in my wildest dreams that you would have allowed me to be walking where I am think about when you was dirty and some of y'all still dirty some of us are still dirty but it's okay because God is going to clean those places. But even in the midst of us being ourselves, he knew we was going to fail. That's why he created us a whole salvation plan. But even in the midst, we can still stand in awe. Because what we do don't change his love. Now what you do might change my love. I'm working on that. But what we do, it doesn't change his love. He loved us before we was even conceived he loved us before the foundations of the earth was created so we can stand in awe of him amen hallelujah thank you jesus it's so amazing it's so amazing your love for me your love for me it's so amazing it's so amazing your, your sacrifice, sacrifice. For every blessing, for every blessing, give unto me, give unto me. For every valley, for every valley, you used to strengthen me. Said it's so amazing, it's so amazing. Your love for me, your love for me. It's so amazing, it's so amazing, your sacrifice for me, for every blessing.
blessing for every blessing given to me given to me for every valley for every valley you used to strengthen me I don't deserve, I don't deserve your, love, your tender So amazing, so amazing, say I stand, I stand amazed at your glory, and I stand amazed, I stand amazed at your strength, I stand amazed, I stand amazed at your power, so amazing, so amazing, so amazing. So amazing. Said I stand amazed, I stand amazed at your glory.
this love of God. How it chases me down, fights till i found, leaves the 99. And I don't deserve it, I couldn't earn it. Still you give yourself away. All the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And there's no shadow. There's no wall you won't kick down. Kick down. No wall you won't tear down. There's no shadow. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Why you won't tear down. Coming after me. Overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. How it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. And I don't deserve it, I couldn't earn it. Still, you give yourself away. All the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. All the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. How it chases me down, fights till I find these the 99, and I don't deserve it. I couldn't earn it. Still, you give yourself away. All oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie, you won't. Now, coming after me, oh, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me, and there's no wall, no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me, there's no shadow, no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Away. 
all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, come on. We're talking about the, the never-ending, reckless love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. take just a moment uh, go ahead and be seated please before she even continues to exhort Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what, what you thought about while they were singing that and if you don't understand uh, in a greater revelation and understanding of what they were saying it probably was just words to you but sometimes I believe we don't know how far away from God we were. I don't, I don't think we know how far away from God we were as sinners, as fallen men and women. We were so far away that you can't even, I mean, you just can't even measure it. And yet, each one of you individually, he didn't come like at, at one time in, in a whole group, each one of you individually, he drew back to himself. It wasn't even your decision. You, did, you didn't even have the capacity to want God. Do you know how far away from God you have to be to not even have the capacity to want him? He had to give you the capacity to want him so that you would choose to want him. I don't know about you, but that's a loving God. That is a loving God. Amen. So I just want you, as they're playing just for 30 seconds, I want you to, within yourself, just, I, I don't know how you will express it, but within yourself, just show some gratitude to the Lord. I mean, seriously, it might be a hand clap. You might sit there silently. You might say thank you. You might stand up. I don't know what you have to do, but for 30 seconds, I just want you to express some gratitude for his love to draw you back to him. Amen. Father, we bless you and we thank you so much. We didn't deserve it you made a way we did not deserve we didn't even know we needed you and you made a way back to you father we just want to take one moment in eternity just to say thank you thank you for loving us so much and giving us the capacity to love you back in Jesus name amen to my grandbaby yesterday and God reminded me of how much he loves me and then today they sang what they sang I had no idea but we know that God loves us here right but sometimes we need that reminder because life systematically every day just beats you down sometimes but the love of God is not like the love of man and I could use that reminder every single day of my life. 
because he loved me sometimes when I don't even love myself. Only God can do that. He's so awesome and so incredible. And I was supposed to welcome the visitors today, which I'm gonna do in one minute. But if you got nothing else when you came here today, it's not an accident that he wanted to remind you that he loves you. He loves you when you're unlovable. He loves us when everybody tells us what we are not, right? But what we do know is that we're made in his image and he loves us so much. Amen, amen. You can give him a hand clap. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. It is such an atmosphere of worship in here that like Minister Lisa said, it's hard to move on. Cause sometimes we just need that, right? Cause a lot of us may or may not be in atmospheres of worship when you're not here on Sunday or, or whatever day you worship. Um, but we have to begin to practice his presence. We have to begin to allow Sunday to be an extenuation of what, or an extension of what he already doing in our lives, right? Amen. So I'm gonna do what I was supposed to do cause he already got a word. Um, Welcome. Do we have any first-time visitors? If we do, please raise your hand. Amen. Welcome. We are so excited to have you today. We are so glad. We don't take lightly that you chose to worship with us. We appreciate you being here. You are a guest in our home, and we just welcome you. Amen. If you can look in the seat in front of you, we have, um, we're, we're trying to be um, in the new millennium, so we've come, we got Q codes now we think we fancy um, it, um, if you wanted to use this car for a, we have guests or if you want to become a member if you want if you've been visiting for a long time we consider you a member anyway but if you want to like scan the Q code just for the formalities you're welcome to do that um, if you want to give and if you want prayer now for prayer we don't take it lightly this is not something that we just throw in a box and be like okay they they wanted prayer for this we pray for these prayer prayer requests we take this very seriously amen so we thank you again you are welcome get comfortable you're at home today and we just love and appreciate you amen and we pray you feel the love of god today at this time i wanted to welcome our pastor pastor bruce moxley All right, good morning. Y'all go ahead and have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Amen. Praise the Lord and good morning to everyone. It's good to see everyone. All of our guests, thank you for being here this morning. We are uh, honored to have you. It is, as my wife said, it is not by an accident that you are here uh, to meet some of the finest people in the world, the, the members of DMI. Uh, to <laughs> And, and they're kind of crazy, too, so don't let them scare you away. Uh, and just to be in the presence of God, to hear the word of God, um, I, I do want to just do one thing uh, just to kind of get off of uh, our, our agenda for today. Uh, I want to, I got to do it, uh, have my, our son, this is a church's son. I want to have Ray to come on up and just to give a couple words, if you would, Ray. And if, if you want to bring your fiance, if, if, if that's totally up to you. You don't have to if you want to. Then. Amen. This beautiful couple right here. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, before I sh have you share, Ray, thank you so much for uh, entrusting us with uh, uh, the service for mom. Um, you know how we felt, and we, we've all expressed how we felt. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, I'm happy that you're here to kind of help us as well. Uh, our first service, moving on uh, while she is watching over us. But I wanted to have you just to share a couple words if you have some, and uh, just take your time. Oh, 
I'll never forget. Um, 22 years ago, uh, it was uh, it was like fall time, and we had come down from from Columbus. We were going to Columbus Christian Center at the time, which was uh, a sister church. I'm not sure how they were connected, but I remember. I mean, I was like 12 or 13 years old, and it was a sister church of Dominion. And so we came down, and this was a it was one of the hardest moves for me to be a part of because at Columbus Christian Center, I was just getting to the age where I was going to be able to be in youth ministry, and my mom was just like, we're going to have to move, you know, things are going with with, the, with work, and we're going to have to move down, back down to Dayton, and you're going to have to live with Grand Grand, and I'm going to be commuting for um, indefinitely, and we're, we'll, we'll put down roots there, and I, I remember that first, uh, it was like the first time that we had visited Dominion, and it was like the same time that that pastor was being ordained to... Uh, to, to be the pastor here, and I just, I'll never forget that, and that's when, that's when it all began, and just, I remember from day one, like, there was just a connection there, and we just fell in love, and felt like family instantly being here, and um, uh, I mean, just little things, I mean, that I recall, like, I, and, and just knowing that, that God knew how everything was supposed to play out, even though I was young, and I didn't see it, but just, I remember immediately getting here, and plugging in, and figuring out, like, I think I was the youngest at the time to, like, I had shared with pastor that I wanted to be an usher, because that was, like, one of the, the few ways I knew how to serve at the time, and I was, everyone else was, like, older, and I was, like, and I remember having to go to him, and then they had to, like, put something in place, because they had never had a youth serve as an usher before, and so, it was, but I just had that heart, because, like, I was so looking forward to being in youth ministry, and to serving, and, and doing all that, and, and, and I, and, and I owe that to my mom because she just modeled servanthood so much. She modeled that as a young, you know, I was a young kid and I was going to to choir practice with her. And anytime the church had events, we were we were there helping and just serving in any way we could. And so there was no way that I was not going to serve. That was not even an option. Um, and not because she was telling me to, because I legitimately had a heart to do that at a young age. And so... I just want to. I, I just want to thank Pastor. Just even at a young age, for giving me the opportunity to do that. I remember uh, we didn't have a keyboardist at the time because everything was in transition, and I was like, uh, I had started at that time. Like that was the same time. The same time that I started learning piano, and I remember like quitting the piano lessons because I was like, this is like this isn't for me. I, I feel like I'm play better by listening by ear. But at the same time, there was no keyboardist at the church. And I remember Pastor just saying, well, why don't you just play this Sunday or something like that? And, or, you know, it was, it was a very short time span. And I was like, uh, okay, I guess we're doing this. And I'll never, I'll just, I'll never forget that. I think we did, like, um, I think we did, like, Hosanna or something like that. The, Kirk, the old school Kirk Franklin Hosanna. It was like, I mean, it was a couple songs. And I just remember learning and. Um, we had the old Kurzweil piano back at the back on 665 Salem. I don't know if anyone remembers that, um, and it was it was rough in the beginning. I mean, I remember that. I'm not gonna. I mean, I've definitely come a long way, but I mean, that's where it all started. And I'm I'm so thankful for Pastor and for for Pastor Rashana for just you know seeing it in me at a at a young age that there was something there and just giving me that opportunity to serve and be in the house of the Lord and just. Just be here, and, and obviously, like from that moment on, like I feel like, just any chance that 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 we could be here, and just developing relationships with people, and ever all of you became like family, and we just we went through so much. I mean, it was truly like, I'm, I mean, I share with 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 Liv, my fiance here, like all of you are legitimately like family. I mean, I I know some church families are are distant, and some you know you don't know everyone there, but everyone here is just. You know, anytime something's going on, everybody shows up, everybody's praying for each other, everybody's figuring out ways to serve each other. And I just, I so much want to thank Pastor for just sharing that and sharing that love with my mom and I because there's nowhere else that we would have been in this area. And I'm just, I'm so thankful for that. And I love you guys tremendously. And I'm so thankful to just still be family and we'll, we'll you know, we'll be back. And, you know, I just, I just love the, that we can, we, any, you know, it can be a week or it can be years and we pop back in and it's just like no time has passed. So thank you so much, Dominion. I love you guys.
And what he what he also didn't tell you is that not only was he the keyboard player, but he was the entire media ministry. The entire media ministry. <laughs> so praise God for growth. <laughs> he did it all. Uh, probably one of the youngest people in the church because we had no clue what to do. But he did it all. So Ray, thank you for everything that you that you have done and uh, we honor you as we honor your mom. Um, and uh, even as he stands up, stands up here, you know, tears start coming to my eyes because you, <coughs> excuse me, you can't look at him and not see his mother. <laughs> so um, thank you very much, you know, just for being here today and uh, taking the time out to come up here. All right, I, I want to get, well, let's pray, and then we're going to get right into the word of God. Father, we bless you and thank you so much for this time together today. Uh, in your word, Holy Spirit, you are the teacher, uh, and we simply ask that you will teach us. Father, I pray for the hearts of your people that you would give us revelation, knowledge, and wisdom today. Help us to understand your word. That's what we need in order to, for your word to bring forth a harvest in our life is understanding. So help us to understand your word, Father, and where we need to apply your word Holy Spirit, we ask that you lead us throughout this week, throughout the rest of our lives in the application of this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I, I have a, a quick question to, to start off. I, I want to ask you, and just you can go ahead and just yell it out. If I were to ask you, what is the opposite of fear? What would you say? Faith. Faith. Okay. And that is... Incorrect. <laughs> Come on now. That's okay. That's okay. Because we have to many times know that we're wrong in order to find out what's right. And uh, if you were to ask me that year, some years back, I would have said faith without, without the shadow of a doubt, right on the point, right on the mark, faith. The opposite of fear is love. The opposite of fear is love. O on your notes, it's not even on your notes. If you don't get anything out of today, I want you to write that down if you have a pen. The opposite of fear is love. Wherever you're afraid, there's some love lacking. Wherever you're afraid, there's some love lacking. The opposite of fear is love. As a matter of fact, faith since that is the, the common answer that many people believe, faith can't even stand by itself. Because the Bible says that faith springs from or comes from love. Love is it, y'all. And although we may talk about a lot of things in here, the two things that the two uh, two topics that will be an ongoing topic because they must be an ongoing topic within the church is Jesus Christ and love. Regardless of what we're talking about, whether we're talking about marriage or whether we're talking about relationships with, with other people or whatever we're talking about, really the foundation of it all is Jesus Christ and his love flowing through us by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. I want to go to the book of 1 John chapter 4 to open up today in scripture, verses 16 through 18. 1 John chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. If you don't have it, it'll be right up on the screens. Hopefully you have a Bible, whether it's on your phone or whether it's in leather or whether it's in imitation leather or uh, whatever it is, you have a Bible. Just have a Bible. It doesn't matter. That don't even matter. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Let me read these three verses to you. It says this, we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. We've come to know the love of God. We've come to believe in the love of God that he has for us. That God is love. Now, God is love. The very na God's nature with it that is saying is love. It's not saying that love is God. It's saying God is love. God's nature is is love. If you want to know the nature of the God you serve, that's what it's telling you right here and right now, that his nature is love. And what is he endeavoring to do within each one of us 
as we go from, as the Bible says, from faith to faith and from glory to glory, he's endeavoring to transform us into the image of Jesus Christ or transform us into people of love. In a time when everything is being utilized by the enemy to divide us. All the divisive schemes of the enemy. He is, uh, you, you can tell that uh, obviously the times are coming to an end. But you can tell because of the warfare that the enemy is bringing forth. If you look on TV and, and the media and everything, everything from your political view can divide you to your race dividing you it's all kinds of air, all kinds of things that can cause us to be divided men and women and in all all kinds of areas but ultimately what god wants is unity within the body of christ what god wants is unity and unity can only come by the way of what of love right so he says that he is love and the one who abides in love abides in God. It, this, now, now, 1 John is, a, is an interesting book because he is very, very he's very specific. It, it's, it's not a book where he is trying to beat around the bush. He's basically saying it the way it is. He said, listen, if you believe that you abide in God or you are one of God's, then you should be one that abides in love. And if you don't abide in love, then we've got to question whether you truly abide in God. Regardless of what you think about yourself, the outward expression of love towards God and towards other people is the determining factor of whether you are, listen to this, even really saved. Is there, if there finally comes a point where, where we can look in the word and we can determine whether we ourselves or someone else, they really truly are walking with the Jesus that the Bible talks about. Because those that abide in love abide in God. And those that don't abide in love aren't abiding in God. But let me keep reading. And it says, and God also abides in the person that abides in love. I'm reading this nice and slow, y'all. I know I could read much faster. But I want to read this nice and slow because I want you to think about not your neighbor but yourself. Are you abiding in love? And if not, then we got to talk today. Verse 17 says, by this love is perfected with us. Say perfect, perfected love. Perfected love. So that, listen to this, and this is going to be a major part of what we talk about today. So that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Confidence in the day of judgment. I want to use another word also. We'll use confidence, but I also want to use another word, say assurance. Assurance and confidence in the day of of judgment there is a day that the bible calls the day of judgment and that day of judgment is a day that each one of us sinner or saint will have to reckon with the sinner as many of you know will be judged by the law whether you kept the law perfectly or not it, it basically, you have to live a perfect life in, in order to be judged righteously as a sinner. And obviously, they've missed the mark because they're already a sinner. Yeah. Then, there are the righteous ones, the believers, the followers of Jesus Christ, or what we term many times in our nation, the Christians. And those that are true Christians will not be judged based on heaven and hell, but will be judged by your works. Either way, all of us will be judged on the day of judgment by Jesus Christ, who is the word. Yeah. And, I've, and, and what that tells us is, is that what we, will, what we will be judged by is the word. The word. Yes, you will stand before the word made flesh. Hey. 
the same word that, that, that is sitting in your lap in whatever form that you are looking at, you're going to be judged by that word. And really, when we talk about the new covenant or the new testament, the Bible calls it, but the new covenant that we are under, under the blood of Jesus Christ, all of the commands are summed up in this one command or two commands. Love God and love others. So if we now were to take this, this judgment day, each and every one of you will stand before Jesus, the word made flesh, right? And what's going to happen is, is really it comes down to two questions. Did you love my father and did you love your brothers and sisters? All the rest of the questions can just go away because that's really what everything is summed up in. Did you love the father and did you love your brothers and sisters that, that I have saved along with you, right? <clears throat> Let me keep reading verse 13. It says, so, excuse me, back to 17, I'm sorry. So that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. Verse 19, there is no fear, listen to this, of judgment. That's what he's talking about. There is no fear of this day of judgment in love. Now, this is all going to make sense in just a minute. But perfect love or perfected love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves what? Punishment. That's what fear involves. Punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. Whew, that was a lot. So let's break this down. I want to ask you, look on your notes, and, and, and I know, I know what I'm about to ask you. Many of you are just going to say uh, nothing because that is your faith confession. But when it really comes down to it, beyond your faith confession, you're still dealing with some things. So I want to ask you to write down what you really, really fear. I just have two spaces on there. Just two, if you need two. On, on, on your notes, what do you really fear? I'm giving you a, a moment of silence just to think about that. What, what do I really fear? Am I afraid of so-and-so? Am I afraid of being alone? Am I afraid of death? Am I afraid of not being able to provide for my family? Am I afraid of my, something happening to my children? Am I afraid of flying in planes? Am I afla afraid of snakes? By the way, y'all, no, I won't even go there. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. This is, this is from the other day. Here, something that I didn't share with you all while we were celebrating our dear beloved sister. Some of you, you, all of you probably did not know how many snakes were in that grass. Did you? Yeah, there were. There were. No, no, I, this is not a joke, y'all. When we were sitting out there, there were garter snakes all in that grass. Yeah. And I dared not tell anybody. I told Ray. I told Titus saw Titus. Where Titus? Titus, am I telling you the truth? Well, there was two by you. That was the two you. I saw some more. And I said, if I tell them the entire funeral, they're going to be looking down at the grass because many people are afraid of snakes. And I already had determined that if I saw one, you go see me walk on air. Why am I afraid of a snake, especially a garter snake? It's not even poisonous. Poisonous. What, but, what, they, but, but what am I afraid of from a bite that can't harm me? 
But but why, what, 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 why? I know that we don't want the pain, but why are we afraid of it, though? Why are you afraid? Who, is there anybody who is afraid of flying in a plane in here? Anybody? Why? Tell, no, no, no. She said, Lisa. No, no, no. I, we, we, we're going somewhere with this. Why, why are you afraid? What are you, what? I, is there anyone that's ever been afraid of, uh, you know, your children, something happening to your children? Anybody that has children? Why are you afraid? Write it down on your paper. What are you afraid of? Really? Well, the reason that we're talking about that, whether it's insects or whether it's situations and circumstances, whether it's a ways of travel or whatever it is, fear has a root. Fear has a root. Now, I looked it up, I went online, and I looked it up, and I wanted to find out what does man say the root of fear is. And studies based on psychology says this, that the root of fear of all fears is death. When someone is afraid to fly on a plane, it's not the plane that they're afraid of. It's not even the height that they're afraid of. You think it's the height. The fear is you're afraid that something might happen and you might die. When we really think about animals or whatever the case may be, and, I'm, and please just, just walk with me through this fear thing. Whatever we're dealing with, we're dealing with something that comes back down to a root of death. Now, that's what man says. But the Bible says this, man stops at death, right? God says, nope, 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 nope. It's not even death that you're afraid of. What you're really afraid of is judgment. That's what you're really afraid of. There's really a piece of you somewhere, and, it's, and, and here's the truth. It's in all of us because all of us are being sanctified. We're becoming more and more like Christ. This is why Jesus feared nothing, absolutely, positively, nothing. Because in his fear of nothing, he was not afraid of judgment because he knew his position with his father. But we have some issues that we're growing into, and it's not because you're a bad person or I'm a bad person, it's because we're being sanctified. We have some issues that have to do with fear of whatever because we're afraid, not of death. Because if death was what man thinks death is and it's the, the, it's the, the ceasing to exist, then once you cease to exist, it's over. But if, if, if death is what we know it to be according to the Bible, it's not the cease, it's the ceasing of being alive in this body, but, but we continue on, then it's more to it than death. We really are afraid of what's going to happen after we die. How, how will God deal with me after I die from this bee sting? After I die from this snake bite, after I die from this plane crash, after, I, after something happens to my child, what's going to happen? That's the real root of all fear. And the Bible says that perfect love casts that fear out. What we're talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, is being the body of Christ that can grow into fearlessness. Most importantly, don't focus on being fearless. Focus on being more loving. Because your love walk will help you to overcome the fear. I also looked up, what is the number one fear of man? Well, this is what they say up here. Not even death. They say the number one fear of man is public speaking. 
Some people would rather die than get up in front of other people and talk. The fear of public speak. What's going to happen if pastor calls me up right now out of my seat and asks me to hold that microphone and stand in front of everybody? Why is that such a fear? Let me tell you why. Because on a surface level, we all are inherently afraid of, listen, judgment. Now, the root of it is the judgment of God. But many times when people don't want to get in front of people, why are they afraid? Because of judgment. It comes back to judgment, elder. Every fear that we deal with has something to do with some, either him, him, God the Spirit, or people judging us. And the Bible says one more time that perfect love casts out that fear. So if I'm afraid, then I'm dealing with something in my love walk that's lacking. In other words, let me just help you so that you don't feel condemned. Everybody in here, including myself, we are all lacking in our love walk. This is what growth and maturity in the body of Christ is about. When we talk about maturity, basically what we're talking about are men and women who know how to love. If you want to overcome fear, don't try to overcome fear. Just walk in greater love. Father, help me to love you better. Love you more. Help me to love my neighbor better. I don't care if it's a woman or a man, if they're black or they're white or they're Asian. I don't care who they are. I don't care where they are in life. Help me to love better because if I love better, that love will cast out the fear. <laughs> and so now you understand why the enemy has this warfare against love. He does everything that he can to keep us divided. Yeah. It, was, it was interesting, and I'm just going to go ahead, I, whatever. You know, people, people that came back to the funeral on, uh, on uh, uh, Thursday, uh, Friday, Friday, that were past members of DMI. Yeah. Many, uh, some of them left on great terms. Yeah. Others of them le did not leave on the same terms. And I had to look within myself to say, am I going to love or not? Can I keep, Denasia, can I keep it real, please? Can I please? When I see them, and some of them, not, not many, were real nasty to me. They wrote letters and said stuff and talked about me. Even worse, talked about my wife. What am I going to do when I see them? Well, let me help you to understand that we need help in our love. So I literally had to ask the Lord to help me to love them. That morning, I said, I don't know if any of these people are going to be there. Father, help me to love. And you know our Father. Oh, yeah. He made sure. <laughs> he made sure that some of them came. Not only did they come, they came right up to me. Hey! And it is only by, and I mean this with all my heart, it is, it is by the grace of God. I can't even give myself credit for, by the grace of God that I could stand there and talk to them. Now, now this is, I'm just giving you an example. But this is what we deal with in everyday life, y'all. 
that people are going to hurt you. People are going to do you wrong. But Jesus within you is still going to require you to walk in love. And if you ever want to overcome the very fears that the enemy will use to stop you from fulfilling your purpose, you must go beyond your situation with them and say, Father, I want to know how to love even the worst of the people. I want to know how to love my enemies. I want to know how to love those who love me, those who hate me, those who talk about me, those who tolerate me. Just give me the wherewithal Holy Spirit to love people. Because the man or the woman that begins to walk in love are beginning to walk in their purpose. That's when God can use you. That's when you're ready to be used by God in a great way when you pass the love test. Because he can't take you out and put you before people and you can't even handle loving people. Let's go back to this inherent thing. I, I got a couple minutes. The inherent fear of judgment. On your, on your notes, what we fear is usually because it is beyond our sphere of perceived personal control. Perceived. We really think that we can keep people safe. We really think that by not doing stuff, we're keeping ourselves safe. Isn't that crazy? Okay, I won't get on the plane, therefore I'm keeping myself safe. Got your S on your chest. And I'm picking on you because it's, it, all of us got something. I won't get on the plane because I'm keeping myself safe. But there are more people who die in car crashes than plane crashes and yet you get in a car. It logically doesn't make sense. Because, again, what we think is we can keep ourselves safe. We think it's in our control, but let me read the next one on your notes. What we fear may be beyond our control, which we have just deduced that everything is really beyond our control. You really can't keep yourself safe. And you know, I, you might carry your little gun on your side. I know some of y'all got guns. I got one too. Yep, you got your gun on your side. You think that's going to keep you safe? It's not. Not, not if it's your time. It's not going to keep you safe. You, you really don't have as much control as you think you do. So the next one on your, on your uh, notes what we fear may be beyond our control, but the fear is never beyond the sphere of God's power. Amen. Now, that's where the safety comes. Now, I can deal with a snake. Not on purpose. <laughs> now, I can get on the plane. Now, I can do this or do that or, or, or entrust my children to the Lord. Now, I can do that because I realize that it's really not under my control anyway. It's under the power of God's will. Amen. Now we're beginning to erase the fear because I love God, meaning I now trust God, and because I trust God, I can do this and trust that because I know that it's under God's power and his control what did Jesus say Jesus said listen hey listen check this one out don't fear man fear God who can save the soul he said he said don't even don't fear don't fear all this other stuff if you want to have a reverence for something reverence God because he's the one that controls all of this and you're not going anywhere. He said he even knows the, the, the number of hairs on your head. In other words, you're not going anywhere until God says, he says, not even a sparrow will fall to the ground without the permission of the Father. So you're not going anywhere until it's your time. And you do have an appointed time. But today we're talking about not even being afraid of that time. 
Ooh, we, we need about three weeks for this one. Okay. So let's keep this going. Okay, okay, so watch this. Third one. If what we fear is usually beyond what we feel we can personally control and is within God's power, why do we continue to choose to choose to choose to fear? It's a choice, everybody. The very snake that I would have ran from, somebody else will pick up. Right? A garter snake. Is there anybody in here that picks up a garter snake? These ladies, right? Big old, I'm lifting weights, Bruce. When I see a garter snake, I run, and these ladies right here just say, it's my choice. I choose to fear garter snakes. It's not because they can't be overcome. It's just, I don't know that I want to overcome that. <laughs> it's a choice. Why do we choose to fear, though? On your, on your notes, listen to this. It's called sin consciousness. Sin all of us, and let me just read this real quick for, the, for lack of time. All of this is about the sin consciousness that the Lord is desiring to transform our mind of. Say sin consciousness. Let me read this, Genesis 3, 6 through 10. Let me show you the first place that fear came in. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and, the tree, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate. And she gave also to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. Verse 8 of Genesis 3. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid. The first place in the Bible that fear shows up is the place where humanity fell from the presence of God. When humanity fell from the presence of God, it, it caused a fear of God's judgment. That, that, that's where fear comes from. This is why you are afraid of what you're afraid of. Because there's still some sin consciousness that's still there that the Lord has to renew your mind about. Are you hearing me? So, sin consciousness simply is the fear of judgment from God. It's not just the consciousness of wanting to sin. It's not that. It's the fear of judgment, of the judgment of God. But when you get saved, then the consciousness or the mindset or the mentality that you are to have is called righteousness consciousness. When you now know that you and God are good, you and God are okay now. Why? Not because of you being a good person, not because you made all these great changes, but because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Your faith in Jesus Christ, it immediately made things good between you and the Father. And righteousness consciousness says, now that things are good between me and the Father, righteousness consciousness says this, I don't have anything to be afraid of. Not only am I not afraid of death, but I'm not afraid of judgment because me and God are, we good. If, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you and God are now good. You don't have to be afraid of his judgment if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, though. But let's go beyond sin consciousness and righteousness consciousness to what the Bible calls assurance. How do you know for sure, for sure, for sure that when you stand before God that things will be okay? 
it's not just by your faith because the book of James says that faith without works is dead. Here's how you know that you are assured. When you know that you are walking through life loving people the way you're supposed to love people, forgiving people where they need to be forgiven, loving them whether they're a woman or a man, loving them whether they're white or black, loving them whether they're a conservative or a liberal, loving them whether they're a Republican or a Democrat, loving them whether they're from the ghetto or from the suburbs, loving them, it does not matter. You just are a person of love. When you walk around like that, you have an assurance. I'm not afraid of nothing. <laughs> I, I'm not, why, why am I afraid to get on the plane? For what? If it goes down, I go up. What, what am I afraid of? If I get bit and something happens to me, I go up. We're so busy trying to hold on to this place. And I understand why. Because he gives us the desire to want to hold on so that we can fulfill purpose. But when purpose is over, Paul said, hey, I run my race. Let me out of this place. <laughs> Let me. It's, 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 it's too beautiful there. The other day. And I'm going to finish up here. I had a lot more, but I'm going to finish up here. The other day, we were talking right after the funeral. And they said, you know, you got on your Ohio State shirt. And it hit me. Uh, I said, you know what? EPB never got the opportunity to, to see me wear an Ohio State shirt. And then Ginger Taylor said, EPB ain't even thinking about you now. <laughs> She, she's in a place she ain't thinking about you. See, that is the mindset of the believer. That there is a better place than here, which means I don't have to fear anything here or fear leaving here because I know that I know that I know that I have an assurance that when I take my last breath, I will be in the presence of God. <laughs> I, I, know, I know you think about, but what about my wife or my kids or what? what? The world keeps going. You want to know why? Because of the presence of God. When we come to the point that we realize that we may feel a little important while we're here. <laughs> as important as we think we really are, this place keeps going. And I'm not saying that, that people aren't hurting, but what I'm saying is, is that it's by the presence of the Holy Spirit that keeps people going. This woman right here was E's best friend. But look at, she's sitting here with a smile on her face because the grace of God, the Holy Spirit is helping her to keep going. Her blood is sitting here. As hurting as, hurting as I know that he feels, but it's by the power of God that he's able to keep going. This thing is beyond us, y'all. <laughs> we are not what we think we are many times. He is in control. Therefore, if we will simply love him, and by loving him, show forth our love towards others, because that's how we show that we really love him, is by loving others. He said, you can't say you Love this guy or this woman. And no, you can't say that you love a guy that you can't see and not willing to love a man or a woman that you can. So he simply says, allow me to love people through you. And that's how you will express your love for me. And that's how that love will cast out fear. And now that fear is not hindering you anymore, now you can really Enjoy life, 
and you can really fulfill the purposes of God because you choose to love. That's it. I just want to ask you as we close, will you choose to love though? <laughs> will you? Will you remember, and I, and I know the Holy Spirit because he's faithful, the Holy Spirit will bring this to your remembrance when it's time, but when he brings that love message to your remembrance, what will you choose to do though? What will you choose to do? My prayer today is that you'll choose love. Don't choose protecting yourself. Don't choose your little reputation. Don't choose any of that. Choose love because love never fails. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we bless you and we thank you so much for today's message. I, I pray over our family, our church family, that we continue to be a people of love. Father, you even said that vengeance is yours. That's not even, that's not even what, what we are to try to get. It's yours, however you choose to do it, if you choose to do it. Amen. Father, we just want to choose to love from this point on. I, that's my prayer for this church, that we be a church of love. We said earlier, Father, your word said uh, by prophecy that people will come from near and far, not to see the duplication of other ministry, but to see the duplication of your son, and that is love. Holy Spirit, fill us all. Use this word today to lead our lives, Father, that we will choose love. We thank you so much, Father, for empowering us to do so by your spirit in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Real quick, we want to have our ministers to come up. If there's anyone that needs prayer, I want you to come on up. We want to pray with you today. Regardless of what the prayer is for, we want to pray with you. Secondly, if you uh, do not have a church home and you really sense, hey, this is where... I believe the Lord wants me to be. I want you to come on up. They're going to pray with you for, uh, as a new member. Most importantly, most importantly, if you have never truly within your heart received Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life, I want you to come up today. Today is your day. The Bible calls it the day of salvation. I don't, I, it, it may be one person that that whole message was for. And you say, I, I want Jesus because I want to walk in love. I want Jesus because I want to be a child of the almighty God. I want Jesus because I want to live righteously and I want to be assured in the day of judgment. If that is you, I want you to come on up. Is there anyone else?
on the seat, under the seat in front of you, there should be a card there. Thank you. These are our connection cards. If you'll grab that card. Uh, on that card, several things you can do. Again, you can use uh, your, your camera on your phone. Focus it on that QR code that's on that card. If you would like to join, please uh, focus on, put, put your, focus your camera on that, on that co QR code and fill out the information that comes up. If you would like prayer, uh, do the same. This is our time of giving. Uh, when it's time to give, which is now, you can just focus your camera on that QR code that says give, and it'll take you right to our website. If you need an offering envelope, uh, please raise your hand if you're giving by check or cash and you need an offering envelope, we'll get an offering envelope to you. Other than that, you can utilize uh, electronic giving. And uh, I'm going to have Deacon D. Where Deacon D at? Come on up. You think I, I, I'm just introducing it? You're not, you're not off the hook. <laughs> 
Will y'all welcome Deacon D as she comes? Then right after our giving, we're going to have Leah Huggins, who's going to give our announcements, and then we're going to be... <laughs> You got, your own, you got your own little club there, Leah. Um, and she's going to give our announcements, and then we're going to be dismissed right after the announcements. Amen. <clears throat> Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that awesome word? Amen. And our man of God who serves it up for us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. All right. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be where? Amen. Amen. Today's money on a mission scripture comes from 2 uh, Corinthians. It is chapter 9, verse 10. Okay. Thank you, media team. And it reads, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Amen. Amen. What does that mean? That means that God will abundantly supply seed to us. His word says that, right? Uh, that comes by way of our income. So we give. Amen. Amen. But then he multiplies that seed, right? So as we sow, the word of God says that we will be abundantly enriched in every way. Amen. Amen. All right. So as pastor said, if you're giving, if you want to give online, go ahead and uh, get your cameras out and point it towards the give uh, code on the QR uh, card. Okay. And I encourage everybody to do that because, you know, sometimes we get, let me talk about myself, stuck uh, in routine. Amen. But we got to come up a little bit. It's not that we're trying to be like the world, but this is, this is how it is. Technology is moving. Amen. And so in order to function, I'm not even going to say keep up, function, we have to know what to do. Amen. So if you guys are not comfortable with that, see one of our leaders uh, and they will uh, help you with that. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome Sister Aaliyah. So today I only have a few announcements. <laughs> I only have a few announcements. Um, next week is our DMI Souls Sunday. Please invite and bring a guest to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Also, during our Souls Sunday service next week, we will have a water baptism. If you are interested, please communicate your interest at the join QR code on our connection card. All participants, we ask you bring a towel, flip-flops, and a dry change of clothes. Ladies may bring a head covering if needed. Please plan to arrive at church no later than 10.30 a.m. for a quick briefing with Minister Patterson. This concludes our announcements, and Pastor will close us out. Thank you. I told, she was so, last week was her first time, she was so nervous. And then she got up there, and she didn't read the notes or nothing. I was like, you, wasn't, you did good, girl. You did a good job. We have one video real quick, and then I'm going to pray, and we're going to be dismissed. Our Married for Life uh, video that we want to show. Hello, Dominion Ministries International. This is Roosevelt and Renita Quick with Enduring Love Ministries, and we are super excited and thankful to Pastors Bruce and Mashonda Moxley for extending the invitation for us to celebrate Sweetest Day with you on Saturday, October the 15th. The Married for Life Ministries will be hosting us as we bring you our couples paint night and book signing. On that night, guest artist Carmen Gaines will be guiding each couple through a unique work of art. All of your supplies and equipment will be there available to you. You'll have a delicious dessert bar, and you each will receive a copy of our new book, The Power of Agreement, Biblical Principles for Maximizing Your Marital Fulfillment. So sign up as soon as possible because space is limited. We're looking forward to seeing you on Saturday, October the 15th for our Sweetest Day Couples Paint Night. See you soon. Amen. So you get to spend some time with, with someone that you, with your spouse or someone, a significant other. You get to paint and you get a dessert. They had me at dessert <laughs> all right y'all stand to your feet we're gonna pray and, and be dismissed
Y'all know me too well. Okay, that's... All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time together. Uh, as we go, I pray your protection upon each and every one of us. But most importantly, Father, I pray that your love will be seen through each one of us throughout this week, not only in our households, but in our community, on our jobs, everywhere we go. Let your love be seen, Father, as we submit to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Give somebody a fist bump or a hug or whatever you feel comfortable doing and have a great day. <laughs>